family and welcome here by us at our Every Nation Swanee Willis Congregation. We want to just give you a warm welcome and we're so glad that you're part of our disciple making family. Now, if this is your first time that you're joining us on this online platform, we really want to wish you a welcome and we know that you're going to enjoy the morning with us. We also love celebrating. So if you celebrated your birthday or anniversary or any other special occasion, we pray God's richest blessing upon you. So let's just dive straight into our announcements this morning. Leaders or leaders, whether you're an upcoming leader or a connect group leader, we're having our VIP on the 25th of June. Now that's our vision, impartation and prayer and it will be at 8 o'clock in the evening. You guessed it, it's an online event but you still have to register. So please register so that you can join us for this evening. It's going to be a lot of fun. One of the things that I love about being married is that it enabled me to become a dad. So to all your dads out there, may you have a, a great day, a, a blessed day full of peace and joy. So join us in watching a short video made especially for you superheroes. My daddy taught me to be brave. One thing my dad has taught me is to care for all the people around you. He does this by providing for the less fortunate. I am so privileged to have a dad who not only taught me, but showed me what unconditional love is. Thanks to him, I could relate to God as a good, good father. And I know what it means when he tells me, I love you. I know my dad loves me like Jesus because he gives me kisses, he tells me, and he gives me hugs and he plays with me. My dad has taught me to be kind, considerate, always try my best and always have fun and smile. Thank you. My dad put in the effort to teach me how to ride a bike when I was still little and I'm so grateful it's still something we can do together. My father taught me the value of respect for one's family and um, respect for your wife. And um, I grew up seeing so much love and care in the home from him towards my mother. And that's something that I truly want to take forward into not only my marriage, but also into my life and um, to my kids as well. Love you, Dad, and uh, miss you. My dad taught me the value of putting family before work, along with a very practical skill of driving and changing a tire. My dad taught me how to play nice with my friends and with a mug into the car. I count it an honor this Father's Day to remember my dad and to honor him. I remember growing up, uh, my dad would say, son, whatever you do, don't give up, never quit. Even though my dad is gone to be with the Lord, I honor him because those that thought kept me going all these years. He was a godly father who taught me many godly principles. On this special day, I want to honor him by saying, Happy Heavenly Father's Day, Dad. So, wow, that was great. So please pray with me. Father, I want to thank you for all the dads out there today. And thank you that you set the perfect example of what a father should act like and the love that you, you showed us, Father, by laying down your life. We praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That's great. So I also just want to say happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Why don't we join our worship team now as they lead us into worship on this lovely morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Hainu. With me is Marga and Alicia. We're going to lead you guys in worship today with music and, uh, well, Winter is truly here, but it's very cold. I hope you guys have a coffee. I hope you're under a blanket maybe. Um, but if you're not, you're welcome to come and sing with us, come and dance with us. And as the words are going to say, come and shout with us this morning as we praise God.
I'm ready I want to scream it out From every mountain top Your goodness knows no bounds Your goodness never stops Your mercy follows me Your kindness fills my that we can come and to sing of your goodness. Come to your feet. Come into your throne room. Come as we are. Thank you, Lord, that we can sing aloud, that we can use our arms and use our voices and scream and shout and dance. Thank you, Lord. And we can be like David, unashamed. Unashamed to be with you, unashamed to follow you. Will you meet us here? 
as we call on your name Will you meet us here? We have come to this place To worship you by your mercy and grace It's you we adore It is you Praises are for All are you Heavens declare It is you All are you Holy, holy is our God Almighty So many times in the Bible it's mentioned how the, how the angels say holy, holy and chant the name of the Lord. Keep on singing, Hosanna, Hosanna. In Isaiah it actually tells us the story of these angels flying around the king, the king with the big robe. And these angels, as they are flying around in the room, they keep on chanting to each other, holy, holy. And we, when we think of heavenly places, when we think of, of one day, 
we will be worshiping constantly. And it always makes me think, am I constantly going to be happy? Is my worship warranted because of my joy, my happiness? Or is there even a place where I can worship even within pain, even within suffering? Even in a place where I completely feel like God has forgotten about me. Is it possible to worship? Is it possible to connect to the heart of God? Is it possible that the Holy Spirit can lead me in irrespective of my mood, irrespective of my emotions? Is it possible that I can see the face of Jesus without emotionally preparing for it? There's a place in this life where we choose. We make a choice and our emotions will follow our choice and not our choices will follow our emotions. And I pray that this morning, as we're singing together, make the choice to worship. Goodbye, waiting for 
分走岗，路基子岗，一分走岗，路基。you no matter where we are no matter how we feel thank you holy spirit that you come and can speak on our behalf perfect our unperfect words come and perfect our unperfect songs our unperfect voices make straight the highway Thank you for the things that you come and add to our lives. Thank you that we can know that we can come into your throne room and come sit at your feet. And we have to bring nothing to the table because it has been brought already. Good morning, everyone. It's Father's Day today, so it is my privilege today to just honor my dad um, because I'm speaking today. Um, I just want to say, Dad, thank you so much for just the father who you are. I mean, you're such an incredible father and grandfather to my kids and always so much positivity that just flows out of you. And then, of course, I want to honor Philip, who is um, the father of my two sons. He's just an incredible dad. And Philip, thank you so much. Um, I love and appreciate you. I love the fact that you always invest time into the children and um, you're doing such an incredible job. Happy Father's Day from my side. Okay, people, it's my privilege today to speak to you about rebuilding relationship part two. 
I know Jonathan spoke last week on the part one, but he basically focused more on multicultural relationships. Today, I will be speaking to you about rebuilding relationships, but normal relationships, just, you know, marriage, friendship, colleagues, employee, um, relationships, all kinds of relationships. Doesn't matter which one you find yourself in, we will be speaking on that today. Now, to walk in unity in a relationship is beautiful. I don't know about you, but if you've seen people being married 30 or 40 years, it's just an incredible picture when you see how they've worked and walked together, stand together over all these years. But it can also be the toughest thing ever to stay in that unity. Because why? Um, because the enemy's number one strategy, strategy in any relationship is to take offense. And if he can get you there, he starts to break down that relationship. You know how many times we, we make bad decisions and um, when we are in offense, we um, cut a relationship, we avoid that relationship. And I'm speaking um, of myself as well. You ignore people. And, you know, when you take that offense and you don't deal with it properly, ultimately it can break relationships. So, and if you look at God, he's such a relational God. If you look at he's, he's the God, it is God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit and all three of them are in fellowship and they are in unity. And God encourages us that he's our example, that we should follow that example. Before I go and I jump into the word, I really just want to pray for us. And let's trust the Holy Spirit. As I mentioned, rebuilding relationship, I pray that those relationships that pops into your mind, that God will speak directly to your heart. Father, I pray now, Holy Spirit, that you will minister to your people. I know that you want to heal relationships and you don't want us just to avoid it and not to deal with it. Give us grace to handle this in a godly way in Jesus' name. Okay, I want to share with you four principles that I believe, it's not the only principles, four principles that will help you to build strong relationship. And maybe if you have built in a wrong way, to rebuild relationship, because I believe all of us can grow in this area. Number one is start with yourself. That is the first point. And I know if you are in an argument or you are in a relational dynamic or there's disappointment, that is really not the most natural thing for you to do is to start with yourself. I mean, for me, in, for instance, what I usually do is, and I try to break that habit in my, habit in my life, is you actually play the whole event, then you rewind it, play it, rewind, and you, you revisit that all the time. And the only thing that, that actually happens in your heart is that offense starts to grow and to grow. Now, if you look at Matthew 7 verse 3, it says, Why do you look at the speck of the sawdust in your brother's eye and you pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Look at that scripture. It says almost like you've become experts in pointing out what other people are doing wrong, but you pay no attention to the plank that's really in your own eyes. The focus is that we need to pay attention that there is a possibility that we can also be at fault sometimes. If we read further, how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrites, first, Take out the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So you can see there that they say first, it's almost like first look at yourself. First take out the, out the plank out of your own eye. Why? Because then you will have true perspective. And that is what we want in a relationship. We want godly perspective. So first start with yourself, even if it's the not the most natural thing for you, practice that in every, any given situation. Start with analyzing yourself. Now, good questions that you can ask yourself is something like, maybe, is there anything that I could have done differently in this conversation? Is there anything that I could have said differently in a different way? Um, is there maybe could my body language, could, it, could I have done it maybe differently? If you ask those questions, I promise you the Holy Spirit is faithful. You know how many times if I ask myself those questions, the Holy Spirit is so faithful. I almost hear it in an audible voice. Yes, Renee, 
you know, you can work in this area. And yes, Renee, that the thing that you did there was wrong. It's almost as if the Holy Spirit is ready to tell you something specific that you can work on. Now, point number two, principle number two is a powerful principle, and that is listen to understand. Now, listening is a gift that God has given us. People, it is a gift into anybody's heart. When we truly listen to understand, we build relationships. Now, I've got beautiful scriptures. There are so many, but I had to choose three. Um, the first scripture there is Proverbs 18, verse 13. It says, He who gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame to him. Then another scripture there is James 1, verse 19. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And the last scripture there is, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his own opinion. So listening is a gift that God has given you. And you know how many times I believe that listening is actually a motive? You know how many times I've seen people that try to listen, to keep to the principle, but their motive is really not to reconcile or to really to recover a situation. When we listen with the right motive, it's almost as if the grace of God is just there to restore and to recover because you get out of the picture. I mean, some of the worst mistakes that I've made in my life is to listen to be right or to listen to win an argument. When I go in with that motive, it's just an explosion and it is just like devastating to that relationship. So people, God has given us a gift to listen. Look, when we do our connect groups, we ask the people, what do you think does that scripture say? And then we listen. As a leader, if you listen and that person is busy breaking open that scripture, you can actually see if they have a good foundation. So when we listen, it's actually a gift that God has given us to reconcile. People feel valuable when they feel that you are listening to them. People feel loved. I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't even want Philip to give me a solution. I just want him to listen to me and already feel a breakthrough in my life. People listening, how is your listening? How do you do? Do you feel like you are a person who listens or do you just want to air your own opinion? Listening in a marriage, in a friendship, asking good questions and really listening is a message that you send to them that you do really care. So that's principle number two. Ponder on that, being a good listener. Number three is self-control. Now, I want to say to you, that is the one that I already fail in. Just by mentioning self-control, I feel like a failure. But I want to be honest with you, I've grown in this area. It's a skill that you can grow in self-control. Now, the scripture there is Galatians 5 verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and then it comes self-control. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, God, for God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. So we know that God has given us a spirit of self-control. Now, the word self and control means like you need to control yourself. But what it actually means is that we need to bring our emotions, need to bring our thoughts under the control of Jesus Christ. It takes humility because you're not in control. You say you take self out of control and you put God in control. That's what it says. So what we do is when we say, God, you've given me the spirit of self-control, help me. It's a sign of humility. God gives you grace. And what we do is we put our emotions, we put our thoughts, and we put our words because our words can hurt people under control. And I don't know about you, but there are many times that I I am so thankful to God that has given me this spirit of self-control because I could have just destroyed people with my emotions. I could have destroyed people with my words. And if I look back, I thank the Lord that I didn't say that or that I didn't act like that. But there are many other times that I have said things that was wrong, that I had to even more humble myself to go and make right. People, if we can have the spirit of self-control, we're going to build relationships. We will 
we will build and invest and deposit in our relationships. If we're going to let go and not work on, the, on our self-control, we will destroy relationships. I want to encourage all of you, that principle is a principle that will be a builder in your life. The last principle is a principle that all of us can practice in our life, and that is initiate action. Be the initiator to reconcile relationships. You know how many times people are waiting in their rooms. They're waiting and waiting for other people to be the initiator. People, some of you are going to wait until God comes because maybe that person will never initiate reconciliation. God is calling you and me to be the initiator to reconcile and to make right and to start to build that relationships. Listen to this powerful verse. John 13 verse 35 says, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. The world will know that you are my disciples with the love for one another. The world will know. Believers and unbelievers will look at it and think, how is this possible? Now, that is a miracle. When you see people for all these years sticking together, staying together, it can only be God. And it actually says the world will know. The next scripture there is, blessed are the peacemakers because they will be called children of God. Now you create, get either a peacemaker or a peace breaker. And I want to encourage you that you will, a desire will start to spring up in your heart to be a peacemaker. Like I said, be the first to initiate peace. Just try it. Just practice it on your husband, on your friend. Be the first one to SMS and say, I want to say I'm sorry because this and this and this. I want to extend and say, if I've done anything wrong, please forgive me. I want to say to you from my side that I was wrong, please forgive me. Either a message, a phone call, a hug. Just be the one that initiate that first step because that's the thing that breaks that pride and breaks the atmosphere so that people can be reconciled. Okay, people, I've spoken about four principles that I believe if you really practice this, it will build a relationship. You start with yourself. You listen to understand, not to give an answer. To understand, to be patient and humble, to listen. Number three is self-control, to practice that self-control. And then number four is to initiate action. I have a few application questions for you today. Does it come natural um, for you to start with yourself when you are confronted in a relational issue? Is it your natural thing just to start with yourself? If not, what are you going to do about it? Maybe start with, in my, in my quiet time, like David said, Lord, is there any iniquity in my heart? Show me. That's a good place to start in your inner room, in your relationship with God. Number two, are you a good listener? And who do you struggle to listen to? You know, God has given us these voices in our lives, our husbands, our friends. Some of those voices are voices of grace that God wants to protect you from and you just shut them by not listening to them. God wants us to be a listener, to be the one on the receiving side and not always to be the one that points fingers out to everybody that makes mistakes. Number three is self-control. How are you doing on that scale? I know I've been tested to the core in this area during lockdown, just being impatient and struggling with self-control. And I can see what it does to my children, to my parents, to my husband, and I'm always so sad. And then I say to the Lord, Lord, help me in this area. I don't want to build like this. This is not the way that I want to be for the rest of my life. Change me, Lord. And then lastly, do you have a conviction that God wants you to be a peacemaker? Maybe if you have forgotten in everything that I've said today, I want to encourage you People, let's be the initiator to make peace. I want to pray with you today. Thank you so much for your time. I really believe God is going to rebuild relationships. There's hope. You don't have to break a relationship and a relationship is not disposable. Like a disposable nap, you just throw it away when it doesn't work. God wants us to know that there's potential in relationship. And if you can get over that offense, can you imagine the potential that lies in that relationship? I want to pray with you today. Father, we have spoken about a lot of things today. We have spoken about things that you know we are struggling with. Jesus, I pray, Father, will you help us? Will you grace us as we humble ourselves and we say, Lord, we need you in this area to rebuild our relationships. 
speak to us, Lord, Holy Spirit, about listening, about starting with ourselves, about self-control, and about being the initiator. Lord, you alone know the battles that we fight in our inner room. Be with our people, restore, rebuild relationships in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for your time. Have a lovely morning with your family. Hope to see you soon.